Good morning, welcome back. Thank you for joining me. Uh, today we're gonna go ahead and take on the air conditioning install. Currently it is first week of May. I am in North Texas and the 10 day forecast is starting to show 90 degree weather. It is inevitable, it's gonna end up to 100 degrees at some point, so I wanna get this done sooner than later. Uh, I went ahead and purchased this 12 volt AC system. It's very similar to the ones that go into the smaller models. Uh, but on the larger models, the MY50, the QNT30, they do not come with that option. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot and see if we can get it put in. I've never done AC before, just as a, a full disclaimer. And uh, I did have to purchase the vacuum pump as well as the gauge set and hoses so we can go ahead and pull all the air out of the system before we charge it up with Freon. So my son's going to be pulling it in here into the shade and then we'll go ahead and we'll get started on this install. As I mentioned this could get interesting. I have never done AC work before as far as the mechanical aspect and being able to install this I don't foresee too many issues with it. The nice thing is the manufacturer they have included a knockout hole here. Uh, basically it's kind of pre-plumbed pre-set up to be able to install this air conditioning system or any sort of accessory on the back of it. Um, what I did purchase because the condenser and compressor is housed inside this unit here and weight on it, if I was to guess, probably about 20 to 30 pounds, I'll go ahead and I'll weigh it up just to let you know for sure. The actual blower unit that goes inside the excavator or whatever you're going to be putting this into, it's fairly lightweight, I'd guess, probably under 5 pounds. So. Let's go ahead and pull this access port out here. That's going to be first and foremost. Then we can figure out the length of the hoses. I did buy some uh, electrical strut channel. Uh, it's pretty heavy as far as the gauge goes, so I feel like it's going to be more than sufficient to be able to hold the weight of the condenser and the compressor. So this will need to be fabbed up, cut to length, and we'll go through that here shortly. steel, a little bit of surface rust on there. I'll probably touch that up with a little bit of spray paint just to make sure uh, I don't get any extensive rust or corrosion on there. Next step at this point is to figure out where I want to put it. I'm trying to go a little bit higher on this just because I want to maintain some visibility out of the back glass. I don't want it to completely block it. Height wise, I think there's enough room. I'll have to build the framing on these nut plates here. But again, this channeling is pretty pretty stout so I don't have any concerns with it in regards to holding up the weight of the condenser and the and the compressor on here but what we're doing at this point is we're fishing the plumbing through just to make sure that it's long enough uh, before I get to cutting any steel you, on it so. main reason I'm putting it back here at this location is it's first of all it sits below the roof that way it's not going to snag on any tree limbs or anything that uh, impacts the top of it and it also keeps it close enough here in the back that it should be protected by the actual hood over the engine i know on the smaller units they hang them on the side which i'm not a fan of just due to the fact of your working environment some working environments i know mine personally there's a lot of trees there so i have a lot of concern for something that would be on the side and getting snagged on all the limbs and causing significant damage and having to redo this a second time so we're gonna do everything we can to get this tucked right. away all right i want to measure it up here because there is a bolt hole right here where i'm going to do a cross brace this way and then we're going to do another cross brace lower here that way it's supported real well so Let's go ahead and get it up to here. I want to keep it below the roof line. So right here, that's going to put us about 20 inches. Should be good. Okay. So let's go ahead and drop down 20 inches here for the side brackets. Or do you want to do 21 so it's below the window? Okay. That's a good idea. So we'll go 21 inch. This is going to be a little harder. If you can go to the other side and let me know, Caleb. Here. Is it just go just past the nut plate? Yeah, right to the edge of the cab there. Perfect. Okay. So that puts me right at 40 inches across. And we'll need two of the 40 inch. Okay, 
The paint has dried on this now, so we're gonna go ahead and get this set up here. We're just gonna rough it in for now. That way we can go ahead and get the cross braces figured out. So the bolt is an M12. It is a 1.75 thread and it is uh, one and a half inches long. Yes, and we have lock washers on there, but when I put this in after it's finalized, I'll go ahead and I'll put Loctite as well. So at this point, this will just get it started so we can go ahead and figure out the alignment on the cross braces and we'll go from there. At this point, I'm confident in the placement. It looks like everything's where I want it to be. Um, the only question I really have is up here, but that's not gonna affect it by tightening these down. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the thread locker on these. Can't forget the thread locker. I finished tightening all the bolts here, lock tight, lock washers, the whole nine yards. We'll go ahead and pull it out, see how it's on there. Yeah, that's good and sturdy. I'm good with that. What I'll end up doing is we'll tuck all this back behind the unit down to this lower channel. I wanna make sure that this is tied out of the way as well. We wanna go ahead and route it. That way it's following all the channel here, it's protected. And then I'll drop it down into the cab. And I'll do the same thing as far as the actual AC lines, just to make sure that they're all together, bundled up. I think eventually I'm gonna find something, try to get some, uh, maybe some hydraulic hose wrap to put around there, just to make sure that I don't end up with any punctures down the line. Yeah, I'll end up zip tying it just like this. I wanna wait until I do the zip tying because I wanna get these hoses hooked up just in case they can all bundle together on the way into the cab. Moving to the inside now with the actual blower unit. This one, it's got three sets of holes on each side. There's two up top here and one down low. Uh, same on that side as well. As far as actual surface area that you can mount it, it is metal basically from here up. So with this being glass, the only way you'd really be able to mount it is if you used some of that channeling and bolted it in out here. But as I mentioned earlier, this unit really only weighs maybe two, three pounds. So there's not a lot of weight there. I'm not overly concerned with it staying put. So I think just doing the four bolts on the top should be plenty. When drilling this, this is gonna go through to the outside, so I wanna make sure I do it once. I don't need any extra holes in here. So I've measured it, it is nine and three eighths from the cab corner on each side, and I went ahead and leveled out the top as well. So since this paint scratches pretty easy, I'm just gonna go ahead and use a pick from Harbor Freight, get inside these holes here, and I will go ahead and scratch my placement. That way I can go ahead and knock out those four holes and get it bolted up. So I can go ahead and pull this down, confirm that I got those marks there, perfect. So I will go ahead and I'll drill the four holes, one there, 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 and there, through to the outside. I'm gonna definitely put silicone on there to make sure I don't get any water leaking in. I did notice when I was going back and forth that this is actually double wall up here. So it's not a single panel like it is down lower. So it's gonna have to be drilled through both panels to get. Went down to the hardware store, picked up a couple of more nuts and bolts, as I mentioned. Went ahead and got a three and a half inch for the upper, which I got this first one started already and it's perfect fit. Probably have three quarters of an inch sticking out outside. Now that I got that one started, all I'm doing is starting the nut and the washer outside. Um, just get all four of them going. Once I have them all started and everything looks good, then I'll go ahead and put the caulking behind the washers and snug everything up. Something worth mentioning also that I noticed uh, due to the angle of this back wall here, this is leaning against the glass and that's not something that I want on there and vibrating. So what I did is I cut half inch spacers that I'm gonna put between the air blower and the wall itself. So that should bring the unit out far enough, it's not gonna be rubbing on the glass. I have all four bolts going through now. 
on these lower bolts, I'm gonna go ahead and put the caulking on those now. I'm just using a, a black silicone caulking. I'm gonna go overboard. I can always wipe off the excess after the fact, but I really wanna make sure that this does not leak. Now that I have all the bolts snugged up, caulking is on them, everything is good tied up there. All the bolts on the track is nice and snug. So next step is gonna to be to go ahead and plumb this. Both of them have the outside ports for being able to do the evacuate and recharge. I already ran them down here through the cab. That way I just have the stubs out here to hook up. This had a cap on it and it has the rubber plug as well. Um, that way it doesn't get too much moisture in there. So I want to be kind of quick about this. I'm going to put a little bit of WD-40 on the rubber O-ring here just to make sure that it slips in and seats well. This again has a rubber plug in it just to keep the moisture out. So I'll try to go quick here. The compressor should be pre-filled with oil. So all that needs to be done is it needs to be evacuated and recharged with the Freon. And the rubber plug that's in here actually has quite a bit of oil on it. So it's not wanting to come out real easy. Let me grab a set of pliers and I'll get that removed. I'm going to try some channel locks. Hopefully that'll do the trick. There we go. Yeah, there's plenty of oil in there, so I'm going to just dab my finger on it. Put it on this O-ring, make sure it slides in well. Get it started a couple of threads by hand. I want to make sure I don't cross thread it, just in case it has to come off again later. Let's move to the inside and we'll hook those up next. Just like outside, I went ahead and put a little bit of light oil on both of the O-rings just to help them slide in a little bit easier. This is going to be a little bit tricky. It's kind of tight quarters, but I don't see why it couldn't be done. Okay, now that I have that started, I'm going to go ahead and snug it up the rest of the way. You don't want to spend too much time playing around with this. The AC systems, they have dryers built into them, but they can only hold so much uh, humidity um, and then they start to cause issues you don't want any I know with this being a brand new system I need to go ahead and pull vacuum on it get any air any moisture out of the system which is what I'm doing right now a big shout out to two car pros I had to go on the to the YouTube nation do a little research again not in my wheelhouse so I've been running the vacuum pump here for about 20 minutes or so and it's been showing zero all right, I'm going to get ready to turn it off. We'll watch the gauge here, see if it holds once I turn off. It should show pretty quick. If the needle ends up rising, that'll tell us that we have a Okay, I went ahead and disconnected the vacuum pump. I'm going to go ahead and do the Freon just this way. This is the device that I have. There's been a couple times in the past where I've had a vehicle where the AC was blowing a little bit warm, and then I just do it this way. This punctures the can, and then this go ahead, or you hook it up to the low side on the system and flip it over. That way it goes in liquid form. It goes a little bit quicker. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and hook this up to the low side port. Screw this in to puncture it. And now I can hear it going into the system. So I'm going to let this go for a little while until it stops taking it. And then I'll go ahead and do the second can because this uh, system based on the book says it takes just under two pounds. So once we get close, I'll go ahead and hook it up to the battery. We'll fire this off for the first time and see if we can get it to blow cold. All right, let's hook up the ground. It woke up. It was talking. Challenging part about this, it's all in Chinese is my guess. So um, power button, that's pretty normal. So we'll go ahead and we'll go to power here and see if we can get it to turn on. Looks like it's going to be in Celsius. Here's the temperature. And turn the fan all the way up. Okay, so five is the highest when it comes to the fan. 
I went ahead and closed the door. It's been about 60 seconds at this point. Since it doesn't pull air from the outside, it's gonna essentially be recirculating. So it should get colder and colder and colder. Uh, but after about a minute and a half now, let me go ahead and put the thermometer on here. It's blown at 39 degrees right now. So I am super pleased with how this is working. Time will tell, see if it holds up through the summer. But right now on a day where it's right around 80 degrees, I'm in the shade. But man, this is gonna be a game changer. I wanna get into the cost of this just a little bit. It wasn't terribly expensive. Uh, this I purchased off of eBay. Somebody, I think, had purchased it, was going to use it for a project, but ended up not using it. Paid $220 for it, plus 50 some odd dollars in shipping. So I was right around $270, $280 with tax on this. The vacuum pump, which I did not have either, that was $59 on eBay, plus shipping, $12, $15, something like that. Um, so really, all in cost is under $400 on this, and that's including the Freon. Uh, Freon, it needed two pounds. Those are $9.99 a pound at my local Atwoods. So to me, I think this is a very, very good investment, uh, especially when I think about the summers here in North Texas. I mean, we can stay in triple digits for months at a time. So this is something that I thought was very, very important. I'm glad I got it on now before it gets too hot. I'm gonna get this out to the property here very shortly. I'm wrapping up the projects. That way I can get out there and put it to work. What I ended up doing on the hoses here, I used that vinyl kind of fabric that came with the kit and then I went over it with a layer of electrical tape just cause the, the vinyl was kind of an off white. It stood out, didn't like it much visually. Um, then also having the electrical tape over, it, I think will give it even more abrasion resistance. Um, on the actual hoses themselves, I had an old radiator hose. What I did is I cut that into smaller pieces. That way I went ahead and wrapped it around the outside of the rubber hoses as well as the electrical wires. Just that way, that way there was a little bit of um, uh, abrasion resistance between the hard metal edge and then the rubberized hose. And then I went ahead and put a layer of the black caulking on there just to keep it waterproof. It was the same black caulking that I used up here on the bolts for the inside blower unit. I think it turned out really good. Let me know what y'all think. It maintained the visibility like I wanted to. I probably have about two thirds of my window is still open so I can see outside uh, when I'm moving around. Move around to the inside here. I'll show you the radiator hoses that I use to isolate the lines. Uh, you can kind of see them here. Just gave an extra layer of protection on those rubber hoses. I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, it doesn't vibrate and, uh, you know, cut any holes, anything like that. So the caulking, again, gave it a little more rigidity, tightened things up. That way they don't have any room to shift once that dries. Once I played with the blower a little bit more, uh, it got down to about 33 degrees uh, once it ran for probably about five minutes with the cab closed. So I have no concerns with this keeping the small, relatively small cab cold during the summer months. If y'all like this kind of content, please subscribe. We'll see you next time.